your call has been forwarded to an automatic voice message system. Zero, one, two, three is not available. At the tone, please record your message. When you have finished recording, you may hang up or press one for more options. Hey, what's going on, man? It's me, Nabil, uh, Nabil Abdul Rashid, in case you have more than one Nabil on your phone, even though we all know there is only one. And uh, I just want to let you know that I really think you should come down to Croydon Shopping Center. It's amazing. It was almost a Westfield, but then decided it didn't want to sell out. And for that alone, it deserves our respect. You need to come down there, play some video games, have some food, and get some Chinese traditional medicine, maybe even see a chiropractor. I regret having this mint and then deciding to start recording. My tongue really hurts. Okay, are you recording now? Yeah, but I think we should stop and start again when I finish this mint. Okay, well I'll tell you a story then while you finish your mint. Okay. Um, I went for a drink with an old school friend who lives in Brighton. Um, lovely bloke. So went to the heart in hand and we met after he finished work and I finished doing whatever I was doing and we had maybe five or six pints and a couple of twackers you know yeah and I said I'm gonna go t- to the toilet now no I was a bit squiffy I had six pints and a couple of shots but I chewed the mint and I regret it yeah it's a sh- extra strong mint oh um because of course I do drink probably more than the average person you point. drink more than the average Alcoholic. <laughs> yes. Um, so I, I wasn't feeling the effect. When I went to the toilet, Liam was fine, a bit squiffy. And then when I got back from the toilet, so we're talking 90 seconds late, two minutes, because I did a good old hand wash, as I do. Two minutes max. I got back and he was battered. He just flipped on a, on a sixpence. <laughs> he, he tried to text his husband to come and pick him up, but ended up texting my girlfriend, just his husband's name. <laughs> Paul. She can't help, she never met him. So in the end, Paul came to pick him up. And Paul, to be fair, was quite angry. Well, what day of the week was this? It was a Tuesday. Oh, shit. And it, and it wasn't late. It was maybe, you know, 10.30. <laughs> and then, and then I t- so I got home and I bought some chicken wings on the way home. And I got home, Beck said I was pretty pissed when I got in. But it's the fresh air, isn't it, that gets you when you've been sat down drinking. It's the fresh yeah, air. it's not the alcohol that's the problem, it's the fresh no, air. What I mean is. <laughs> <laughs> that's, what, that's why if you ever go for a really long dog walk, you come home absolutely yeah, smashed. Battered, yeah. No, but you can go, uh, you can be sat in the pub, like a Sunday afternoon's a classic. Nice country, ho- nice country pub, nice fire, nice bit of like, you know, meaty, stodgy food, and seven or eight pints of ale, and you feel great. And then you walk home. And because you've been sedentary and warm, you're okay. But when the realism of the world hits you, you're fucked. So anyway, I got home a bit pissed. Decided to sleep in the spare room because I knew that I would be snoring. So I had enough with me to be like, I'm not going to ruin your night's sleep. I'll go into the spare room. So Wednesday morning comes round. Becca brings me a cup of tea. Says, thanks for doing that. You, how's your head? That was fine, to be honest with you. I stay hydrated as well. You've got to drink water while drinking beer. And I text Liam and was like, how are you? And he said he got home and he threw up everywhere. Oh no! And he was in trouble with <laughs> Paul. <laughs> All right, finish my mint. Should we do some TripAdvisor reviews? Lovely. Really enjoy it. So, William, it's a National Treasures first. We're going to a shopping centre. We're going to a shopping centre. We are. You're very trepidatious about this, aren't you? So we're going to a shopping centre that I think is going to be reasonably similar to every shopping centre I went to in my (laughs) childhood. And not one of them I would put under the umbrella of enjoyable. Yeah, okay. So what we've decided to do is we've given ourselves a budget each. Uh, to spend so that we're not just traipsing around not doing anything we're we're going shopping aren't we we're going shopping how do you feel about shopping generally you strike me as a man that likes to shop I don't the thing is I am I don't honestly I can't answer that question I'm not being coy I'm not (laughs) Um, so we're going shopping and um, we're going to the Whitgift shopping centre I've never been before no, I've never been before either. My whole experience of Croydon really is changing trains at East Croydon, and that's all I know it for. So I'm excited. Will, I've had a look at the TripAdvisor. Okay. 
Now, there aren't many reviews, to be honest. There's only about 100. And I went to it very prepared that people were not going to rave about this shopping centre, probably. They were probably going to use it to air grievances. That sounds about right, doesn't it? Yeah. So we'll start with the baddies, because that's what we're sort of expecting from this TripAdvisor. Um... We've got a one star here. It just says, I would not recommend this centre as the security staff think they are something special. Well, that's been written by a shoplifter, isn't it? (laughs) (laughs) Oh, I thought this one might interest you as a possible activity we could do. Okay. It says, one star, just awful. Just awful. Groups of kids hanging around completely unnecessarily. As it turns out, it was for a prearranged fight. Need I say more? Um, yeah, I think so. Like, who won? (laughs) Yeah. West Croydon side story. (laughs) Also, I think, like, you can't say they were hanging around unnecessarily. If you've arranged to fight someone, it's very rude to not hang around. Yeah, yeah, completely. It's not, they're not loitering, they're better for a ruck. Yeah, leave them alone. Um, oh, this one, here we go. So, uh... Uh, I mean, most of the review is just quite shitty about it. It used to be lovely. The world's a terrible place nowadays. The parking is expensive. And then just the final thing, it just says, the streets are smothered in chewing gum. Smothered? Right, smothered. Yeah, good. I mean, not a good. Is it a good word? I think so. Smothered really sounds like it's all still wet and sticky. Like, it's not loads, loads of that, like, Dalmatian effect. It's like... Smother smothered. Yeah, you know like when you go to an old pub and the floor's really sticky? I'm expecting that, but not through spilled beer, just through <laughs> the world's shittest trampoline park. Another two stars here. Very drab centre. In need of massive investment. Loads of empty shops. Large amounts of kids always hanging around. Fighting outside McDonald's. No atmosphere. Atmosphere. It's not a fucking restaurant. <laughs> it made it. That one sounded to me like he wanted like a soundtrack to the fight. Yeah, that that one's weird. Like I these mean... poor kids having to fight with no atmosphere. Like how do they get their steam up? <laughs> well, I've got to say, I was trepidatious, and now I'm a bit less trepidatious about how fun it's going to be, but more trepidatious about getting stabbed up. <laughs> Do you want to hear the most wholesome review I've ever come across? Of course. Right. Five stars. I have been coming to the Whitgift Centre for many years and have seen it change so many times. Oh, God. I mean, when I was tiny, the centre didn't even have a roof. Fuck me. It was... Does that mean she remembers it when it was being built, or...? There's no way to tell. It was all open air, for goodness sake. For goodness sake. For goodness sake. My, how things have changed. I think the centre, considering how old it must be now, is in pretty great condition still. I go here regularly and still have plenty of shops to look in. The Whitgift Centre shops always seem to have everything I need, and they have plenty of places to eat, too. My favourite one being English and Continental. Boy, oh boy, they have so much choice on their menu, and what's more, it's so reasonable. English and Continental. And the staff there are always so lovely. It's a pleasure to go and dine at their place. Overall, I think the Whitgift Centre is still going strong. As for the closed-down shops, I'm sure other businesses will go in their place when the time comes. Whitgift Centre has always served me well over the years, and I hope it will continue to do so for many years to come. And do you know what, madam, or sir, I hope the same too. You're my favourite person on TripAdvisor. So there we go. Are we going to have a fight? Will there be an atmosphere? Will all our shopping needs be met? Will we have a a wonderful dining experience at English and Continental? I've had no lunch. I am hungry. Great. We've arrived. Will is not enjoying the car park. It's so dark. It's so. You are wearing sunglasses. Do you want your? Oh yeah, I'm wearing sunglasses. sunglasses. I'm wearing sunglasses. (laughs) (laughs) It looks like old skate ice skating rinks from the nineties outside. Um, hell of a local reference. If anybody ever went to Peterborough ice rink during the time of the Peterborough Pirates ice hockey team, um, it's very similar to that. Um, right, let's pay for parking and head in. Great. There was a lot of moaning about parking. How much are we guessing two hours parking is going to be? 
Um, so we're going to buy, what, two hours, three hours? I'll be angry if it's more than seven pounds. Oh, fuck off. I think it's going to be like 15. 15? Yeah. Let's All right, let's have a look. We're annoyed, but not for the reason we thought we'd be. Oh. <clears throat> Up to four hours was five pounds. That is so reasonable. Yeah. Also, it wouldn't let me buy four hours. It would only let me buy two hours for four pounds. What? So it was four hours for five pounds. Yeah. But it wouldn't let me buy four hours. It said <laughs> not available. So I've bought two hours for four pounds. Okay. I think we can agree that's quite reasonable. Let's go. Oh no, we're going to go through a multi-storey car park staircase, which I think is one of the most disgusting places in the world. Yeah, it's been, it's been designed clearly to the brief of, make it good for taking heroin in and nothing else. Okay, we are through the big blue doors. First thing you see, picture of Boris Johnson on the wall as the Mayor of London. Wow. How has that not been graffitied? <laughs> nice little bit about the trams in Croydon. And then, um... Now we're in. Don't think any of these shops are open, though. I think they're not open. Uh, I think they're not open, Laura, because they're um, boarded up. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. So, yeah, you walk in and there's like a few boarded up shops, a bar that's shut, uh, a research centre and an art gallery and then an aquarium shop. I was not expecting an aquarium shop to be the first open thing. It looks so good. When I've done my wee, let's go in there. Okay, okay, great. We've found the toilets. They are up here on the top floor. So this feels like a good place to start. We'll start up here where there's just toilets and then we'll work down. Yeah, uh, oh, before we get into it, Laura, <laughs> shall we have a chat about the man we walked past? Oh dear, we yeah. Past, we walked past a man. Now bear in mind, if you recall from TripAdvisor, there was a lady who remembered when all this was roofless. Now now there is very much a roof, a nice glass roof. We walked past a man inside, just smoking a fag, and then he spat on the floor, just spat on the tile. And that has probably been the best thing I've seen. <laughs> I've been it. Now, look, I don't want to judge a book by its cover, Laura, but I crave a walk in Box Hill. Will, I'm going to try and keep a little bit more of an open mind than I feel you've got. You've shut your mind down. No, I haven't shut my mind down. I'm, um... You know what the stereotypical thought when someone said, let's go to Croydon Shopping Centre, all of the sort of prejudice and, oh, that's going to, you know, uh, but to be fair though. Yeah, so far <laughs> it's been a little bleak, but we, we've there's only kids, made a mad dash to the toilet so far. Yes, there is a whole line of school children. We're actually here on World Book Day. There's a whole line of school children all dressed up downstairs, which is beautifully gorgeous. Oh, th 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 their teacher is either dressed like Dolores Umbridge from Harry Potter or has got a wicked sense of personal style. I think both. Should we mention that we've accidentally come dressed the same today? Yeah, we've both worn pink jumpers, black blue jeans um, and sunglasses. Fancy shoes. Fancy shoes. Um, right, let's go down, back down on the escalator then and we're going to start with level two. I really hope there's food on level two. Um, I'm not sure I'll be eating anything that's prepared in here. <laughs> you are such a snob. No, 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 I just haven't got dysentery and want to keep it that way. <laughs> Okay, first of all, on our right, there's a kitchen shop. Can we go in the kitchen shop and look at stuff? Go in the kitchen shop. Wow, look at the size of that blue roll. Should we buy some blue roll? No, I'm all right for blue roll. But I think if I do need blue roll, I'll be coming here. Yeah, that's a lot of blue roll. I am um, genuinely really like sets of pans like this. Yeah, there's, so Will is looking at a really nice set of all different sized pans. You know, and they, the biggest ones on the bottom and then they stack up smaller on top. A little bit of red with a bit of shiny silver on it. It's kind of like an independent Robert Dias, isn't it? Do you know what? I've genuinely been thinking about getting an air fryer. I've got an air fryer. Is it good? It's fantastic. I made some uh, fish, like fish tacos the other day. And I had to do all the bad, uh, fried a fish. And then I didn't eat all of them. And then the next day I um, just popped them in the air fryer and they were good as gold. I've got some air fryers here. Maybe that's what I'll buy for myself as my little treat. Um, I will say, Laura, I think you should get an air fryer. I think these ones are quite overpriced. 
Oh, do you? Is that expensive yeah, so for an air fryer? My one was cheaper than all of these and was uh, small. It's bigger than all of these. Ooh, okay. Will thinks so far the Whitgift Centre is marking up no, their no, air no, fryers. No, 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 <laughs> no, 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 please. That's a nice teapot. Nice little bamboo handle on a teapot just to our left. Do you have a teapot? I do. It's a William Morris pattern. Ooh, did you get it from the William Morris Gallery? No, I got it from Amazon.com. William, the that's murderer. why the high street's dying. Yeah, but the air fryer was so much cheaper. What do you think of these tablecloths? Wow, they've got them. They're on like a, a roller, like you'd yeah. expect to find. Um, Fabric, yeah. Oh, yeah. I would have said wrapping paper. Oh, yeah, you just tell them how long a tablecloth you need and they cut it to size for you. Big fan of that. Oh, they got fun. curtains. I don't need any curtains. This shop's got everything. William. Look at this chair cover. Please describe what we are looking at. It's the kind of thing I think the aristocracy in the 1930s would have described as a bit too much. <laughs> <laughs> it's like if you wanted your sofa to be wrinkled, fluffy and beige. If you wanted an old English sheepdog but weren't allowed a pet in your flat, perfect. Oh, that is nasty. Well, there's a DIY section. This place has got everything. I like it here, Will. I find places like this comforting, you know? Yeah, I am. Um, I always get a little bit in departments like this, like DIY departments. I always feel a little bit emasculated because I know full well that I don't own any wire strippers, have very little need for some wire strippers, and should the need arise for me to strip a wire, I just call a man. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe we should. G I've got wire strippers, you can always call me. No, I'll, call, I'll, I'll just call the man. Why wouldn't you call me? Because you're a lady. I'm good. I'm good at stripping oh, wires. Oh, weight scale thing. You know, that's for like measuring your suitcase when you're going to the airport. Yep. Newtons per square metre. I need, I, need, I need an iron board. Oh, there's some toys in this corner. And handbags. Jack, Crockery. It, it's sad that, you know that thing that you sometimes hear when you go, where are you going? I'm, 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 I'm postulating. Um, Can you hold the mic for because my arm's tired? Sometimes you'll read things on the internet, things like, there'll be a time when your parents picked you up and put you down and it was the last time and neither of you knew. Or one time your friends came to call on you to play and it was the last time but none of you knew. I would like, I'd like to add to that, there was once a time when you went to the shop and were genuinely excited to look at the toys and it was the last time. Like when did I, when did I stop being, when did I not want a JCB toy? I mean for 35 quid, never. That is expensive. Yeah, but I still go and buy board games, so I feel like I still have that joy. Mm, but I think as the, the child that would have been excited by the JCB wouldn't have given two shits about Cronkle the Smirk and Verve in the Tavern game. Yeah. What's it called? Taverns of Teeth and Thumb. Yeah, Cronkle the Smurfle Turf. Yeah. Oh, wow. A see through toaster. Well, I've loved it. Do you remember John Tickle from, the, big, from brother, big Brother? Big brother yeah, wanted to invent a toaster where the two slices toasted at slightly different times so that you could butter and get one ready while the second one was still cooking. I don't hate it. No, no. I remember right. people really laughing at him at the time, but actually, good idea. So you leave the kitchenware shop, and then I'm afraid to say it's quite a few empty units. Yeah, there's a lot of shutters down. Is that a super dry store shut up to? Yeah, now I don't know if that's... I mean, that's an arcade in there that's clearly open, but there are shutters. Maybe you just get to it from another place. Yeah. Also, I mean, beneath us are just quite a lot of empty units. Mm -hmm. Now, I don't know, is that the death of the high street? Is it the fact that, you know, it's sort of it's the beginning of the year, so contracts may have ended and not been refilled? I mean, it's March. It's, you know, it's March. Just. Not, not the beginning of the year. See, Clark's shoes there, that's not shut down, but it is shut. closed. Are we just in a closed corner? There's a shop over there called Paris Climate. Let's go and look at Paris Climate. Paris Climate must have been really annoyed after the Paris Climate Accords just vacuumed up their search engine <laughs> the, optimization. The one USP. <laughs> and it appears to be a games shop, toys and games. Yeah. Well, you know what Paris is famous for? Super Change Robot, the ultimate knight. Oh, this is like knockoff, um... Transformers. 
Super Change Robots. It is a Super Change Robot. And their name for Optimus Prime is uh, Tower Thunder. It's, oh, Dance Angel Princess. <laughs> Those pop in and out rubber things like cake pop moulds that are all the rage now that fidget spinners are out. I can't believe fidget spinners are out. Do you have a fidget spinner? I had one. You seem like a prime candidate for no. somebody that needs a fidget spinner. No, I had one, but I was about 30 when they were big. Um, so I didn't buy one, because I'm not a nonce. Did you steal it from a child, I, then? Um, yeah, I confiscated it from a child at the school I worked at. And kept it? Oh, there's tables over there. That might be somewhere we could eat. Yeah, well, I didn't. I did keep it, but it was more that I sort of forgot I had it and then quit the job and... That is stealing. Yeah, but he was using it as a weapon. It's English. <laughs> it's English and continental. <gasps> we found English and continental. Should we go there for lunch? Yeah. Do you want to eat now? I do, yes. Great. Because we don't want you to miss a moment, um, we should point out we tried valiantly to go to English and continental, but flying in the face of pretty much the entire world, it's cash only. And we only have six pounds to our name. So we've been assured that there is a cash machine on the ground floor. Ah! Will spotted a Nat West in the distance. So we're going to get some cash and then we're going to go back up. I honestly do not know the last time I took cash out of the bank. But okay, okay, back to open minded. Um, I am excited to go and eat some English and continental food. What do you think they're going to have this English and continental? Ch- chips and brie. Do you think chips are English? Big fat chips, yeah, that's big what we're doing chi- for. Big fat chips. Big fat chips. chips is the English cuisine. Okay, well, I'll be very excited to see. We're going to go there now, and then we're going to go... You too, mate. Wow, a nice man. What happened there? A man just said, have a nice day, and we said thanks. Why did he say that? Were you oh. smiling at him? Uh, no. Well, I like this menu. They've got apple tango. Yeah, and they've got original Lucasade, but not orange Lucasade. And the first thing on the menu, Laura, guess what it is? Um, I did actually see this, but I'm going to let you have your moment. Uh, banana and peanut butter sandwich. Delicious. I'm having a cheese omelette with chips. I wanted a corned beef sandwich. They've got no corned beef, so I'm having tomato, mozzarella and pesto panini. This place is so... I think in the interest of fairness, we can't pretend it's not a rundown shopping mall. But what it is making me do is feel so nostalgic for a time when I was a teenager where you would just like mooch around town and part of this is that this i flicked my glasses then i'm so excited part of my excitement is the menu is littered with paninis and it has just thrown me back to a time when paninis were the height of cool like i remember paninis becoming a thing i remember life pre-paninis pp Pre, yeah, pre, the menu pre, pre, is of the little venue is listed with paninis and the floor is smothered in chewing gum. <laughs> I haven't seen any chewing gum. Not a single, okay, I'll give it this. Apart from that man, I saw spit on the floor. It's been quite clean. Yeah. Oh, but do you remember when paninis came in? Like Costa and coffee shops suddenly got a panini grill and you'd, you'd have mozzarella and tomato and the tomato would be too hot and flavourless. Oh. Yeah. And it, I, I always think it's funny because panini is just an Italian word that means sandwiches. Does it? Yeah. Ooh, drinks are coming. My apple tango and my cup of tea. What was your um, Saturday mooching? What, what did it what involve? Yeah, so like, so I grew up in Taunton, well, outside Taunton, but when I was a teenager, it was before mobile phones. Not everybody had a mobile phone. I got my first one when I was like 14. Yeah. Siemens A38. I had a Siemens. It was a blue one. I can't remember what type it was. Um... But I know. But even if you had a mobile, you definitely didn't always have credit. I never had credit. Did your phone have the thing where like you had zero credit and then you got like two pounds of overdraft credit? Yes, I think you did. You could dip in a little bit. So like you had to make, you still had to make plans. We're probably one of the last generations that had to make plans. So me and my lot, we would. It would always be ten o'clock outside Boots because Boots was right near Vivery Park. But it was also like in the shopping century bit. There was a pastimes just there. Do you remember pastimes? I, yeah, they, they was really boring. Apart from they always had a full selection of horrible histories. Did they? Yeah. Like they and it was mainly like photo frames and yeah, photo frames like a map of Rutland from 1630. <laughs> yeah. 
that was near the boots and then there was a little panini place just round the corner sorry to go back to past times i'd forgotten all about they always had as well and i remember really wanting one and my dad having to explain to me on a almost fortnightly basis <laughs> that i had no need for a wax seal <laughs> See, that's really funny, because at one point in my school days, Lucy Knight bought me a wax seal. And uh, did you ever use it? No, I don't think I did. My problem as a teenager, though, was I was such a hoarder. I would never <laughs> want it... Oh, such a what, sorry? Yes, thank you. I would never want to use up things like that, and it just meant I never used them. Like, the phrase, when it's gone, it's gone, really got to me as a kid. I think, you know, like you say, you should be your real self. I think my real self does like handwrite letters with a quill and have a wax seal <laughs> but I could never commit to being that I'll tell you who I really like do you know um, comedian and actor George Fouracres yeah. currently Hamlet at the Globe big that isn't it but he like his whole aesthetic and self is 1920s landed gentry but not in a I'm doing this for an effect way he just likes everything about that so he drinks out of an elephant tusk goblet and he Wears like wingtip shoes because he likes it. And I think, yeah, fair play, George. I think I should wear a ruff. <laughs> Maybe you should bring it back. In fact, I introduced his uh, show to Radio 4 recently. He's got a Radio 4 special. <sighs> no, I know he has. Because the uh, Radio 4 people came to see his show and my show on the same day. <laughs> Ooh, sucks to be Will Duggan. I'll be honest with you, Laura, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Except that you're here having a day out with me and he's not. I mean, at the Globe in Hamlet. Yeah, and you're here having a day out with me. Um, what was your Saturday like as a teen? So it, it, there are two like phases to my Saturday as a teen. First one, younger teen, uh, Liam Payne and I, uh, not the one from One Direction, different guy, uh, would go swimming, but lengths, not um, floats. Uh, oh, inflatables. Yeah, none of that. It was, you know, we'd do 40, 50 lengths, and then we'd go to the kitchen kebab house and have a quarter pound of cheese. Then we'd mooch around. Then I got a bit older. HMV? I, yeah, but more for the DVDs. Accessorise? No, we'd, more for the DVDs than the films. And then we'd go to... Food's here. Thank you very much. Will's got a panini. Oh, and I've got an omelette and chips. Thank you so much. Um, quite a bit older. I would go to the... That's a salty lettuce. Have you ever seen more beige on, on my plate right now? That's incredible. I'm so happy. Um, I'll take a picture of you dinner. I'd go to the William Nib Centre... Uh, William Nib, an abolitionist from Kettering. Then I'd learn to play like guitar riffs. Then I go to the library gardens and try and kiss girls, and, <laughs> uh, and would often succeed. Can you smell sweet corn really strongly? I can really smell sweet corn. Oh, there's a man saying sweet corn. So what we've done now is we've come down to the bottom floor because we've realised this is where the doors to all the shops upstairs are actually open. So upstairs was a bit sad, but downstairs it's a shopping mall. Yeah, you've got everything. You've got Clark's, you've got Blueberry Smith. You've I've got... never seen a sweet corn sh- counter before. Yeah, there's one in Wolfram, so. Clark's shoes. You can't go wrong with a Clark's shoe, Will. How many pots of sweet corn? he sells in a day I do not know the smell of it is making me feel yippy oh, I love sweet corn yeah but you don't want to just eat a pot of it do you I actually wouldn't mind do you want one right now go and get a pot of sweet corn I don't want a pot of sweet corn right now I've just had a, I've just had a mozzarella and tomato and pesto panini though I will say English and continental you were a bit stingy with the pesto there's a shop there that says how can you beat a bad back and I'm like with a stick I haven't, I haven't seen an officer's club What's for a while over there? is that a furniture shop there's a pound land. The pawnbrokers has moved. I mean, you know that business is bad when the pawnbrokers is going out of business. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, some big toys. What we got here? The toy shop. Dot com. Plushies. It's a good word, plushies, isn't it? Yeah. It's good content, us just saying the word plushies. Oh, look at this. So there's, there's um, some toy dolls here. There's like a rainbow high colour change car and then there's the rainbow high house and there's a, a doll's bed and then above it it says, it's one of those like neon wall signs. In a, real, in a real house it would say live, laugh, love. Yes, but in this it says dreaming is always in fashion. What's your favourite like live, laugh, love sign? We've discussed this before, William. Yeah, you know the answer. Uh, it, what is it? I've forgotten. Um, I tell you one, no, I can't say it. I'm going to have to edit this out because somebody I know has got it in their house. 
But if you become a patron, I'll message you and tell you what it was. Uh, it is... Oh my god, fuck <laughs> off. <laughs> so call social services. You don't deserve to have kids. Should we look in the water stones? Do Laura's annual disappointed at no, the lack of her shop? I, I don't want you to be sad. But what if it's there, William, and I'm happy? It's not, though, is it? Ah. Because they've sold it out, it's so great. New book coming out in June. Is it? What's this one about? Netball. I did know that. I was just giving a little plug. <laughs> All right. Oh, Krispy Kreme donuts. What's your favourite Krispy Kreme? I don't like donuts. What? I think donuts are cling in the mouth. You are a mad human being. What's your top pudding then? Pudding? Like a, 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 um, a transportable pudding. Um, chocolate eclair? That's basically a donut. No, it's not. It's That's a long, thin donut with the cream on the outside. Well, for a start, the cream's on the inside. Um, well, then it's a donut. And it's not a donut because it's shoe pastry, not dough. It's not glazed. It's not. It's also, I think, donut, I think half a donut is enough. Don't get me wrong. There will be pictures of me. There will be evidence of me eating a donut. <laughs> and I have done. And I will do again. Please, just, find them and shame him. But I just think that, give, oh, we could have had sushi for lunch. Oh, Claire's accessories. Do you want to get your ear pierced? Do you reckon they still do that? Yeah, nose piercing available. Oh, my God, they've still got the chair in the window. Shall I get my ear pierced? Uh, yeah. Should we go in and ask? Let's go in and ask. So, we are now in a Claire's Accessories. Two people born before the fall of the Berlin Wall. A combined age of 70 years old. One of them a homeowner. Two of them reasonably successful in their careers and one of them is about to get their ear pierced in a Claire's Accessories in Croydon at 20 to 3 on a Thursday afternoon. We go straight over now live to Laura Lex. Laura, how are you feeling? I'm very excited. I never do impulsive things. Tom's going to be so surprised. I, I, I'll be honest with you, I'm quite surprised. <laughs> do you think, am I, is my ear getting fall off? I think you're going to get some very cheap metal put through a part of your body and you're going to pay for that privilege. Have you ever had uh, whereabouts in your ear getting pierced? The top bit, that curly over bit. I had that pierced when I was 21. Yeah? Yeah. And I was about five years too old at that point. (laughs) Because I was never in um, the band Five, you see, so (laughs) it doesn't doesn't really suit me. But hey, this is the world we live in. So that's going to happen. Is it going to hurt? Well, they're going to stab you... They're going to shoot you with a gun that stabs, so yeah, it'll hurt a bit. But not too much. You're getting it now? A little bit, but... It's too late. Well, it's not too late, because you leave, I suppose, we don't live here. Um, <laughs> here we go, the lady's here. Hello. Hello. Hi. She's 35. <laughs> Today? No. No, just, 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 in, just in general. Oh, thank you. Okay, Laura has signed the, the paperwork. She is ready. How are you feeling, Laura? I'm nervous, actually. I don't like being in pain, but... It won't hurt. I it's imagine. always bad though when you have to sign those waivers before you do something that's like. When by I, the way, your ear might fall off. When you I, could die. When I was when 18. Do you want it sort of along here? Or um, like, I don't know really. If you go further up, it's going to be a bit tricky. Okay, you know yeah, let's why? go. Because. Like, no, I'll show you in a second. I'll yeah, do sure. It because your ear folds over a little bit. Yeah. So I think one here might be nice. Okay, okay I'll show cool. You. When I was 18, Laura, I went to Ibiza. I got my nipple pierced and I wet myself for the pain. <laughs> Yeah, uh, yeah. Uh, I was quite drunk and it really hurt and I pissed myself. <laughs> well, was Ibiza? It was, it, 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 it was Ibiza in 2005. It was the Wild West. I would wet myself if you got your nipple pierced right now. I'd gone that day in Ibiza to get a tattoo, but the tattoos had gone home. Sorry. Thank God, because the tattoo I'd wanted hadn't been nice. Oh, uh, what was the tattoo then? Oh, it was just a stupid 18-year-old tattoo, and I, I, I never got it in the end. The, the dot is in place. The dot is in place, and we are still... The eyes have got nervous, the hands have got... I'm sweating so much. Are cleaning the gun? Knees weak, arms sweaty, mom's spaghetti. <laughs> 
The gun is clean. The packaging is sterile. The gun is loaded, Laura. Oh God, it's not gonna hurt. It's not gonna hurt. You're gonna be grand, mate. Well, it's gonna hurt me. It's in the ear. Oh, no. oh, no. Three, two, one. Oh no, it didn't hurt at all. It didn't hurt at all, and it is done. Laura. She can. I got my ear pierced. Laura got. Laura's got her ear pierced. And that's it, Laura's got her ear pierced. Well, there we go. We'll probably. Thank you so much. Let's pay for this and then go. What to the car, really? (laughs) Right, Laura, you, um. Well, have a chat with Laura. Um, I just got my ear pierced and I'm so excited. I never do impulsive things. Um, my ear does feel like it's big and fat right now and it hurts quite a lot. Um, but I'm so excited. I've got a little glittery stud just in the foldy over bit of my ear. Will, do you think it looks beautiful? I think it looks wonderful. I actually think it's the kind of thing that if I didn't know that you didn't have it and someone said, does Laura Lex have a little tiny stud hidden in her left ear? I'd go, probably. It felt appropriate to do here. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It was something that you would get done in the nineties, in somewhere that you should have come in the nineties. <laughs> um, well, it's not been that bad as it. It's been ups and downs. I don't know why you're being so negative. It's been lovely. I think I, I'm quite sad. Well, firstly, I'll be honest with you. The fact that we saw the man smoking and spitting inside did colour my opinion immediately. You love smoking, and I'm sure you've spat for, before. I've not smoked for ages. Uh, I don't spit inside. Um, but shall we head over to see someone that does genuinely love this place and go and chat to Nabil? Let's do it. Bye. Uh, we're joined now by Nabil. Hello, my love. How are you? I'm fine. How are you doing? You alright? I'm good. Yeah, I'm good. Thank you so much for sending us to, um, to Croydon Shopping Centre. It's the first time we've ever been to a shopping centre. That's a Not in <laughs> <laughs> so um why there why is that your favorite day out please well i mean with what i do for a living i, I travel a lot like far away from where i live which is credit um so on the days that i want to um have a good time with my family i don't want to have to go through that burden again of traveling great distances <laughs> plus we have everything we need in Croydon. um you know for example i'm a a big game. I love video games. My kids love video games. Well, we've got a really cool arcade where you pay just one entry fee and you have access to the arcade all day from when it opens to when it closes. And they've got games all the way from Atari and Nintendo and arcade games all the way down to the most recent um, uh, consoles. Um, I'm a big foodie and uh, we have really cool food in uh, the Croydon shopping uh, centre area, uh, ranging from Malaysian to Thai to Chinese to Korean to Ghanaian to Kurdish. It's all there. More variety even than um, central London, I would argue. So, like, why would I want to leave when everything is just right there? And we can ride there on the tram, which is the (laughs) most reliable form of transport in the UK, even though it doesn't go anywhere important. Like, oh my God, I must make it to Argos in five minutes. <laughs> no fear. <laughs> the tram is here. No, but, I love it. The bill, have you, have you started working for TFL? <laughs> no, I hate TFL. <laughs> <laughs> we don't have the underground in Credit. We just have the overground, the reliable East Credit Station. Probably one of the busiest train stations right next to Club of Junction, which, might I add, is only 10 minutes away from East Croydon <laughs> Station. <laughs> <laughs> All roads lead to Croydon, except West Croydon. You must stay very far away from West Croydon. <laughs> Do you know what I love about Don't this? Is that credit. it's so easy for people, especially comics, to really like slag off where they're from and where they live. Like it's such an easy joke to make. It's so refreshing to hear somebody being genuinely really enthusiastic about their neighbourhood. Oh, but I love it. It's great. Plus, everyone knows me here. So, like, if I forget my wallet, I can just pay for shit the next day. It's amazing. (laughs) It's brilliant. I love credit. You know, people say to me, Nabil, you're successful now. Successful in inverted commas. You're successful now. Why do you still live in credit? 
Why Why would I move? Where else would I go? North London? I think not. <laughs> Crendon is amazing. We even have chiropractors here. How many areas have a chiropractor and a Ghanaian restaurant within a stone's throw of each other? Name <laughs> one. And exactly, you can't. Ghana? Crendon runs Ghana? Things. <laughs> um, one thing that did make me sad, Nabil, because every time that you and I have seen each other and speak, we talk about perfumes and fragrances. And I wanted to buy uh -huh. a, 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 I wanted to buy a perfume in sent to by the man that I know that knows more about perfumes than anyone else I've met. And there was nowhere for me to buy a perfume in Croydon in the shop. That center. is a lie. That is a lie of the heart. Oh, okay. I'll have you know, some of my best scents I've ever purchased were opposite the shop I used to work in, in Croydon Shopping Center, just downstairs. I can't remember what they were called. It was Scent Something. These places are never named creatively, right? <laughs> and not only did they have one branch, they had two. The second branch of this shop was directly behind the first branch. So if you missed it one way, you found it on the other. One is facing the entrance and the other the exit. And just a stone so away from this perfume shop is a Malaysian restaurant, which is hey. upstairs. So you can turn up to your chiropractor, to deliciously full of food and smelling great. Yes, and then around the corner from that, we have some Chinese medicine. I'm not sure if they're actually Chinese or if any of the stuff they sell is medicinal, but <laughs> that's what it's labeled. Ah, uh, brilliant. TCM, Did you grow up in Croydon? Chinese then? medicine. I grew up in a place very similar to Croydon called Nigeria. I'm not sure if you are aware <laughs> of this small country of small and quiet, humble people. But um, most, of my, my, most of my life in the UK, I have spent in the borough of Croydon. Nice. <laughs> so what, can you describe for us, like, say from the age of like 13 to 18, what a Saturday morning as a teenager in Croydon was like for you? I moved to Croydon at about 17, so oh, okay. I think three of those years would be fictitious. <laughs> 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 All right, let's hear, what was your Nigerian teenage weekend like compared to your Croydon teenage weekend then? So Nigerian teenage weekend, you know, I started driving at about 13, 14. Now the legal age to drive in Nigeria was about 17, but also we had bribery. So <laughs> I would go out for a drive, pick up my friends, and we go play basketball. I was a very good basketball player um, as a youngster. I wasn't very tall, but I jumped very high, so ah. it balanced out. Uh, we play basketball against rival schools on the weekend and basketball at school uh, during the week. Um, you know, it was amazing because, like, you know, every now and then, you know, we would have, like, gatherings, like house parties and stuff. Um, you know, we, we would go out, and after, like, a game of basketball, there was this, like, we had open barbecues on the street where you could just buy what you wanted. So we'd have, like, street food, and, like, we'd have parties outside, and, yeah, it was, it was just fun. It was, yeah. was really, really, really fun. It's lots of um, sports and partying. Uh, of course, in between, uh, loads of studying, because it's Nigeria after all, and we all had Nigerian parents. So, but, <laughs> um, yeah, it was loads of sporting activity, <laughs> loads of partying. Loads of street food, loads of fun. And, you know, every now and then we would get into big fights with our rival schools because that Ooh. was tradition on a Friday. Oh, that's nice on to a have a tradition <laughs> of <Yes>. violence. <laughs> Keeping the old I mean, ways alive with a good old fight. <laughs> yeah. Every now and then I look for alumni from my rival school. <laughs> Cut them down. A, uh, a, a Nigerian woman that I used to, a Nigerian woman that I used to work with, she taught me how to make jollof rice, and I made it. And she took it to her church on a Sunday, and they refused to believe that it had been made by a white man because it was so tasty. And I'm going to make some for you. Okay, challenge accepted. <laughs> it's good jollof uh, rice, man. It's good jollof rice. I'm going to make a traditional English dish for you. And you're going to give it to your friends, and they're going to refuse to accept that a black man made it. So I'm going to buy some cabbage. Yeah, but, but scampi's really easy, isn't it? <laughs> That's not English. <laughs> it's just a potato, isn't it? No, even that's not English. That, that's American, technically, isn't it? You know, it's true. Like, like when in college, like we all used to make fun of each other, like oh, Ghanaian go eat fufu, Nigerian go eat jollof, and then when it was time to rinse the English guy, everybody just went quiet. <laughs> like, what do you guys eat? 
um, crisps. Uh, w- w- we eat food from other countries. Yeah. <laughs> because we're si- we had such a nice time. It felt so nostalgic to be in a, a mall like that. We went shopping, and, and then we just well, sort of cut to talking to you. Uh, English and Continental. Really? Yeah. You came down to a um, vibrant area like Croydon. I went to have an English and Continental. You see what I mean? <laughs> only, <laughs> no, but, on, but only because, <laughs> Nabil, uh, on, on the TripAdvisor for Croydon Shopping Centre, there was a lovely review by a woman who was probably about 80 years old. Well, actually, she I'm starting to think it was weekend. Nabil now. <laughs> <laughs> no, but he'd have gone somewhere nice at the Ghanaian restaurant. Get his back crack. Well, that's true. Uh, you went, but we had a lovely time. Thank you so much for sending us there, mate. It was great. Thank you for having me, uh, and thank you for giving a try to Croydon, which I must remind you has some of the best public transport, <laughs> thanks to the track. Um, and where can people catch you? You've got so much going on at the moment. How can people keep up with what you're doing? They can follow me on Twitter, Instagram, or Facebook. They just need to type my name, and I appear everywhere. Or say yeah, five do. times in front of a mirror <laughs> at your peril. Oh, that was lovely, Nabil Abdul Rashid there, um, just telling us all about Croydon and where you can find him. You should check him out. You've just missed his Soho Theatre run, but I'm fairly sure they will have recorded it, so look out for that special on stuff. Um, thanks for listening. Yes, thank you. Um, I'll be honest with you, Laura. Uh, I, I kind of want to go back to Croydon just to give it another little go. Yeah. Um, but I won't. You were um, so judgy. But yes, you can listen to all of our stuff wherever you get your um, podcast. If you go to at Treasures Pod on either Twitter or Instagram, we've got a link tree where you can link to all of our things, all different uh, feeds, email. And if you like what we do, I want to throw us some cash. Uh, you can go to patreon.com forward slash slash national treasures uh and sign up to get loads of bonus content for a low low price of five pounds per month yeah and please do that if you're enjoying this like obviously we dish this out for free but we pay to make it um but we uh want it to be a viable business and so we're offering on the patreon you get four episodes a month of years and years which is me and will discussing history in depth uh you also get the extra live stream which comes out as a podcast in case you don't want to attend the live stream um and And that is pretty good, isn't it, Will? And also, you get longer episodes of these main flavour episodes. You get the extended. It's usually about 15 to 10 to 15 minutes extra in the Patreon episode. So it's quite a lot for your fiver. Every every week is a Richard Donner cut of the podcast. Boom. Um, Also, if you want to to give to tenor, you get all sorts of cool shit. Get on the get on and have a look. Thank you for listening. We love you. We love you. Goodbye.